There are many sources of progression in the Battle Cats. XP, Cat Food, Stage Drops, Gotcha Rolls, Cat Fruit, Behemoth Stones, Base Materials, NP, and more. Each serves a unique purpose, but they are all very important for progressing through the game. There is one resource, however, that determines everything by itself. Energy. In the Battle Cats, playing stages costs you energy, a resource that regenerates over time and has an increasable cap. If you don't have enough energy to play a stage, you either have to wait for it to regenerate naturally, or use an energy refill. The speed of progression through the Battle Cats is reliant on energy being there for you to complete stages. Since the beginning of the game, players have sought to find a way to cheat the system. Nowadays, we do see other exploits used, such as seed tracking and the cat combo glitch. But back then, it's safe to say that the energy glitch was the exploit that shaped the game. What is the energy glitch? Well, the energy glitch exploits a mechanic on how energy is regenerated in order to instantly refill your energy. Throughout its lifetime, while the exact specifications on how to perform it have changed, the overall idea remains the same. Trick the game into thinking that time has passed by setting your device's internal timer backwards, most commonly by two days, and then turning it back to normal time. There may be other steps involved, depending on the method, such as turning off and on your Wi-Fi at certain points. Some other cases involved closing and opening the game, or performing certain steps at certain times, such as when the game was loading up. If performed successfully, your energy would be fully recharged, due to the Battle Cats thinking that two days have passed, and would give you two days worth of energy, easily enough to refill anyone's energy cap. Who discovered the energy glitch? Well, that is unknown, due to how simple in concept it was to perform. As for when, the earliest video on YouTube happens to be on the 16th of January, 2013, so my guess is around that time is when energy glitch began to take off. Do note that this exploit quickly swept its way through the community, with most players that watch Battle Cat's videos on YouTube being aware of this exploit and how to perform it. Every time a new version rolled out, players would make videos showcasing whether it had been patched or not. The energy glitch was a very powerful exploit. It allowed you to play as many stages as you wanted when you wanted to, and allowed players to progress through the game quicker. For example, while non-energy glitches may have had to wait a few days for energy in order to reach Empire of Cats 3 Moon, energy glitchers can recharge their energy instantly and make it there in just a single day of grinding. There are also some other results of utilizing the energy glitch. Gamatoto, introduced in update 5.0, also utilizes a real-time based system to generate rewards. When you perform the energy glitch, Gamatoto's 6 hour trip would be instantly finished, allowing you to farm some basic resources and even cat's eyes when Gamatoto was at high enough levels. The same applies for the Ototo Corps introduced in Update 6.0. The Ototo Corps takes time to construct upgrades for your cat base, and takes some hours in order to complete each upgrade. With the energy glitch, you could finish these instantaneously and quickly upgrade your cat base. Although this did require other resources, Ototo helpers could be obtained by simply farming Gamatoto, and base materials could be farmed by playing Stories of Legend stages. Speaking of which, the energy glitch allowed players to farm farming stages as much as they wanted. Stages like XP Colosseum, which awarded millions of XP each clear, but costed a lot of energy could be played multiple times for free, quickly leading to you obtaining enough XP to upgrade units as much as you wanted. Cat fruit stages could also be farmed quite a bit, allowing you to easily true form your units. Likewise, the base materials from before could also be farmed very easily by re-beating the various cheesable stages in Stories of Legend very quickly. But perhaps the strongest point of having infinite energy was the ability to farm cat ticket stages. 
Cat Ticket stages, such as Cat Ticket Chance, Siege of Hippo, and Facing Danger, drop cat tickets upon being cleared. Cat Tickets allow you to spin a silver gacha, which can drop duplicates of your normal cats. And when used, give them plus levels which make them stronger. The normal method for obtaining cat tickets beside farming stages would be from occasional one-time rewards upon clearing stages, or from a free daily cat ticket obtained for logging in once a day. Farming these cat ticket stages with infinite energy allowed you to easily power up your normal cats to the maximum, which made them incredibly strong. Considering back then how the meta was heavily centered around the true forms of normal cats, doing this would help you be strong enough to beat many stages in the game. But there's also another effect from farming these cat tickets. Certain units have level caps for plus levels, such as plus 10 for blue upgrades, and a differing limit for normal cats depending on your user rank. If you were to reach these caps, you are given the option to exchange your tickets, turning every 5 cat tickets into rare tickets. Rare tickets allowed you to roll the rare gacha, which allowed you to easily farm for rare ubers in the game, as well as get a lot of plus levels on your other gacha units. You could easily farm tons of rare tickets from farming facing danger, especially considering that it dropped 2.3 cat tickets on average, which is more than double of Siege of Hippo, which is what people use to farm cat tickets today. Although I don't know when Facing Danger actually came out, due to it not being stated in the wiki, we do know it either released at the end of 2015 or at the start of 2016, coming with or after the 4.4 event stage All Hollows Road, and coming with or before the 4.6 event stage Jolly Saint Nick. During the period when energy glitch was rampant and the original Facing Danger was up, you could say it was the best time to farm in Battle Cat's history. The energy glitch may have also contributed to the development of strategies in the Battle Cats. Playing stages multiple times to test out strategies costed lots of energy, and with the energy glitch, you could play the stage as much as you wanted. Although you could force close a stage to replay it without the energy glitch, you wouldn't be able to change the lineup. This would also stop working when no continuous stages came out, making energy glitch even more important. It is quite possible that energy glitch contributed to the development of strategies on the first advent stages, as well as the manic stages, which were all no continuous. Facing Danger may have been the first stage to be as optimized for speed as it was, with strategies such as the maglev clip and frame hit, and that in part may all be due to the energy glitch. Of course, with such notoriety and power, Ponos, the game company behind the Battle Cats, decided to take action. If the game found out the player was attempting to perform the energy glitch, which would involve changing the device's time, it would give the game the dreaded HGT error, which put the game in recovery mode and prevented energy from being recovered for two days. The risk of getting the HGT error was the main drawback of using the energy glitch. People were also questioning upon every update release on whether energy glitch was patched or not, as for some people, their method of doing it ended up failing. While these updates may have stopped some people, Others found new methods and continued to energy glitch. Ponos then took another action in an update 6.7, the update that gave us Eulala on floor 40, they turned Facing Danger into a one-time playable stage. After clearing Facing Danger the first time, the stage would disappear and not be able to be played again until the next rotation. This stopped Facing Danger farming from being a thing but the energy glitch would allow you to farm other parts of the game still. The Battle Cats wiki says that the energy glitch was patched on version 5.0, but you can clearly find people performing the energy glitch well after it was patched. Nowadays, you might find methods of performing the energy glitch through a firewall, and typically only on Android. But the effects of the energy glitch on the history of the game is definitely something that was notable. Now, you might be confused on why Energy Glitch fell out of popular favor. Maybe people thought it was patched, or they didn't want to go through the effort of installing another firewall application 
just to perform the exploit in Battle Cats. But I think the real reason Energy Glitch became less popular was because we simply didn't need it anymore. In Update 8.2, Ponos introduced the Leadership, which replaced all energy refills. The Leadership was an item that would instantly increase your energy by the amount equivalent to your maximum energy when used. This would make obtaining and using energy much easier overall. Previously, energy refills would simply refill your energy to its cap. For example, if your cap had 500 energy and you used a pre-8.2 energy refill, with exception to cat food overcharging, your energy would be changed to 500, no matter if your energy was 0 or 499. With leaderships, if your cap was 500, and your current energy was, say, 400, if you used a leadership, your energy would become 900. This prevented excess energy from being wasted, which it used to be. The energy cap is also bigger nowadays. It used to be much lower back then, around 500, but nowadays players can reach an energy cap of around 1100. Using leaderships or refills with a higher energy cap gives you more energy to use, and thus the need for the energy glitch goes away. Of course, adding more stages to the game also gives more chances to earn leaderships, as every time you finish a map in Battle Cats, you are awarded 30 cat food and a leadership. There are a lot of players who end up having 50 or more leaderships saved up nowadays as a result, and with 50 or more leaderships, the energy glitch is far from necessary. But now, it's time to tread some moral ground. What are my thoughts about the usage of the energy glitch? Well, first of all, this is a single player game. If you happen to abuse the energy glitch, I really have nothing against you. Feel free to play this silly cat game in any way you want. But technically, there's more to this than just being a single player game. Because personally, I am not a fan of some other exploits, such as seed tracking, but I'm still fine with the energy glitch. This is where we get into more subjective matters, so don't take my words here as facts. What the energy glitch does in the most simple fashion is allow you to play more of the game. Energy is a factor that limits your ability to play the game, and with the energy glitch, you simply are allowed to play as much of it as you want when you want to. Some people don't have the ability to play Battle Cats whenever they want to, and can potentially only play at certain times. The energy glitch allows you to play the game based on your own schedule. Another thing that separates the energy glitch from other exploits is how it affects the overall gameplay of the Battle Cats. With seed tracking, you can easily get the most broken ubers, and more importantly, know whatever ubers you are getting. This essentially removes gacha luck from the game, which is a big part of the fun in Battle Cats, or at least to me it is. If you aren't a fan of gacha luck, then you could go ahead and seed track. But at least from what I hear, a lot of players end up quitting the game due to seed tracking, as they simply lose interest in the game from being able to know whatever ubers they are going to get. One of the big reasons why people keep playing Battle Cats is to obtain the best ubers, and with seed tracking, the surprise factor is eliminated, and this goal is met much more easily. At the end of the day though, you are the one who determines how you play Battle Cats. You should play and use whatever units, glitches, or exploits you want as long as it gives you the most enjoyment. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. This one is a bit shorter than usual, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Have a good day.